we are happy to be able to facilitate this evening. You have a, a good discussion, and uh, I already thank you for being here. And uh, well, with this, you give importance um, to women uh, issues and human rights in uh, in the region, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Thank you. Um, besides uh, the words that we hear, there's also the images that we need to see in order to become more aware of the situation and what's happening in the region. The Taliban want to destroy girls' schools and government buildings where women work. We should destroy the Taliban. We don't want the Taliban's Sharia, but the Prophet Muhammad's Sharia. In Allah's Sharia, there is full freedom for girls to have an education. Of course, uh, after looking the videos, uh, of course, it's shocking. And I think that every person dealing with the Afghanistan or Pakistan issue should look first at these videos. Women are not human beings. Women versus the Taliban, tuning their strict version of Sharia. This is how the Taliban dispensed justice, whipping a teenage girl 30 times because they say she was alone with a man who wasn't... The video of the flogging has galvanized women's and civil society groups to protest against Talibanization. It's the fear of Talibanization that has triggered this outrage. But the deeper struggle is an old one about the identity of Pakistan and which law should rule. As Pakistan is already a patriarchal society, they take advantage of that and plus they use Islam and they say, oh, women should be in Parda and women, the, a woman's place is in the home. Was the entire populace of the U.S. asleep while over the last 20 years this, you know, um, these monsters were growing in our country? I mean, um, I'm sorry to be harsh, but you know, it's time to, to wake up and it's time to, st uh, to stop playing the victim. Now broadcasters worldwide are covering the Talibanization of Pakistan. Of course, government, parliament should take action, but also the public opinion, media, uh, uh, are very important in this. During the last years, I have been, on behalf of the European Parliament, the reporter, the, the rapporteur on women's rights in Turkey. Of course, there is a very, very big difference between the situation of women in Turkey and the situation of women in Afghanistan and Pakistan. What we can do from the European side is emphasize that aid should be, uh, should also have a gender dimension uh, on the issue of trade agreements. Uh, it should be really, really closely monitored that human rights clauses are respected. Um, reports are always helping by parliamentary commissions and what also is needed is to have to stay in close contact so that we can help and support all those brave women taking action and that we can coordinate as much as possible. And I'm ready to play a role in this aspect. Unfortunately, we are women. We never interpreted the Quran or the Sharia in our ways. It is always interpreted by men. That is very wrong. We educate. When we are educated, we go to study law or to study this and that. We never go to Sharia, we never go to interpret. We need to rewrite the interpretation of, of the Islam. We need to rewrite it from the perspective of women's eyes and we need to fight those people with that. We realize that there's a lot of issues around women in, in these two countries. There's poverty, there's social development issues, there's political participation, um, the whole range of things. If each of you had to choose just one intervention, one entry point that you think would help improve the, the, the position of women in Pakistan and Afghanistan, what would that be? In reality, we choose political participation and we, we need support of international community, the real support of international community. For this issue, we need more support in education, advocacy, and also awareness raising 
also for the community levels of Afghanistan, I mean the women. We do our best. We have chosen as a woman organization two issues actually in Kabul, working for all Afghanistan. One is the political participation in do the, the second is women access to the justice. I think that we cannot achieve any objective unless our voice is heard at a larger and bigger forum. If we really want to bring change in these countries, at least we should have more powerful women into the mainstream in policy making, in decision making, only thing, then change could be visible. So we have to focus on attitude changing and education and awareness raising alongside everything else that we do. We cannot just say one thing will solve, uh, will be the, one, one thing at a time will, will change. Things. How can we assist you in a way that it's not counterproductive? Don't you think, again, this is a prejudice for women. You people don't think when you go take NATO forces in Afghanistan, when all other men issues are there, nobody asks them that you are being westernized. So if when it is the question of women and their uh, dealing and their dealing with funds, you say that we will be accused of uh, being westernized. I think uh, we don't have to be that defensive, you know. You have to take some initiatives. If this can work for men, it should work for women also. We feel more at ease. Uh, to help you. Uh, the point that you raised, I agree with you. At the same time that I think that the international community should fully support women issues when there is need. At the same time, you have to be careful. In, our, in, in certain uh, areas, there are sensitivities, cultural, religious, and uh, other issues. But this, there's a way to do it. and a, a, There's not one answer or one solution. I think we, that's why you, you, you need, or the international community need good advisors. There is many women, many women more educated than men in Afghanistan. But women always keep quiet. I've been threatened by Gulbuddin Akhmatyar, by many other group, fundamentalists, which I hated. Men keep quiet because of the position, because of the power. Woman is honest, woman is not corruption. Women support always peace. So my position is, as a woman, I'm talking for the freedom of all Afghanistan, man and woman. There is man and woman have no freedom right now. We should be solid ahead uh, from the European Union. We should be sol uh, have solidarity uh, with the women in Pakistan, and by taking concerted concerted actions by uh, putting it high on the uh, as a high priority on the agenda uh, we can uh, help uh, our sisters in Pakistan